Hello, welcome to uh, this brief overview of what's required for the feasibility research business plan for your new venture product or market that you'll be doing for one of the courses you're taking me in. You're either taking me for intro to business, you're taking me for, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, entrepreneurship, small management, depending on how much information I want you to provide me depending on the course. But this will be a quick overview for all my courses that this is kind of like the template. Uh, to what extent more for more advanced courses, a little less for, uh, or, or the uh, second tier for my uh, introduction courses, okay? So let's get, uh, let's get started on here. You already have my concept maps. We have already discussed this in class. I'm going to go over what the requirements are. So let's look it on. If you just happen to find me on YouTube and you say, hey, this is pretty interesting on a business plan. Uh, this aspect of the business plan in the, in the course, before I do a full pledge business plan, which every uh, detail, uh, you, you know, uh, all my product lines, all my product mixes, you know, different categories, every employee, a job description, specification. Before I even start this way, I start off from the basic. This is a rough outline. Can my business be sustainable? But that means uh, uh, profitable for the next five years. Can I get financing for my business venture? And then here, this comes all real uh, roughly. I think I'm going to get financing for the bank. I'm going to use uh, venture capitalists, uh, angel investors, or uh, crowdfunding, whatever. I don't get, you know what I mean? Right now, you're just saying, hey, here's where I think I'm going to get the money. That's one aspect of your business. The next aspect of your business is what investors, even if you're going to go try to get get a loan and you need a business plan so the next aspect of the business for investors is uh, uh, how who's going to make this happen that's the management the leadership that we've been talking then the question is where are you going to open up can will you open up because you understand the market there's a need for my product you understand the customers the basic thing is this whole business uh a research study or even a business you open up, you have to know the customers you're targeting. Once I understand the customers, and that's when I find out through my market uh, analysis, and that's basically I do the research first, and then I do the marketing, and then, you know, and then uh, how I advertise is my formal communication to my customers. The marketing is my integrated uh, uh, of a marketing plan or the heart, as we discussed, for that one project. So if I'm opening up a new business, my heart Part of my project is awareness that people know I'm providing a service or product that may uh, uh, help them satisfy their needs or wants. I understand there's competitors out there, and that's what we're gonna when we do the SWOT analysis in here. When we discuss the SWOT analysis: strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats. You're gonna provide a SWOT analysis in the marketing, and you know basically every aspect here i'm looking at the swot analysis what's the strength weakness and opportunity for this plan right now the swot analysis will be on the marketing you have to understand your strengths and your weaknesses for your business venture and the opportunities and threats that are out there and when you do the marketing you also have to understand your competitors strengths weakness opportunities and what threats they have and one of their threats is probably you because you're going to come in and you're going to uh, satisfy one of their weaknesses to their present clientele. Because you're, you, but you have to have everything else they're offering. Why would I switch from one product to another just to get one item and then there's 80% uh, uh, is not what I want. So everything that they're having, I'm meeting and exceeding that client's expectation from their previous provider but I'm also adding my one of my strengths is going to be what one of their weaknesses are. Okay, so we're going to do that. The operation part, and I'm going to go through all this. I just want to give a quick general idea what you're trying to do here. Financing, we assume you're going to have the financing. You know, just give me how you, uh, your plan of action, one of your SMART goals, remember? Uh, 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 it's uh, SMART goal specific, it's measurable, it's attainable, right? What's the other one? It's, uh, it has uh, relevance and it's timely, I almost forgot it. But you know, you know it, okay? 
And so here's where we're at and the critical risk. What are the critical risks? Well, the economy, you, you open up an economy that's uh, uh, going either way right now. So when I'm looking at critical risk, what will happen? Maybe there's a new law registration coming in. Maybe there's something happening. You have to have a contingency plan for your operation to be sustainable for five years to be able to take any kind of critical risk that you perceive that may occur. I'm hopefully never occurs. Remember in business, I'm looking at the worst case scenario. I, I, I look at both the best case scenario and the worst case scenario. If I can survive in both of those, I will have, a, a, you know, my business will be sustainable for the next uh, five years, which investors are looking. They're looking for you longer. And why do they want you to be sustainable uh, for a longer period? Because they want you to repay their loan, the money or the interest they use, uh, uh, they're charging you. But they also, if you're growing, you'll come back to them for more capital, for more uh, investments or, or back to your suppliers. All this is part of your business plan. It's part of you knowing where you want to be in the next five years for your operation, your business. Or maybe your recommendation when we come in here will be that it's not feasible at this time, but maybe down in the future. Okay, so let's start. Before I go, so this is a quick overview of what's required for those of you who don't know. So uh, I teach at a community college. Most of you know that. Uh, if you take uh, looking up, if you just find me, look me up in the community college or look uh, up uh, or go to community colleges. You have a business uh, uh, programs there to help small entrepreneur business. There's a small business associations always attached to most community college that's the central part to help local business individuals to uh, help them establish a business but not only to help them establish locally but start thinking globally and to look out uh, for a lot of pitfalls some businesses start without a business plan but as they grow and they get consultants coming in to assist them they basically have to have here's where you're at what do you need you have a plan that it lets you, uh, when you look at your goal, am I on target, am I off target? You could do it, but you're a lot more effective and efficient with a business plan. So for my paper, what's required is a quick check of the rubric overview. Let me just go what's required. I'm gonna go real, just wanna go a little slowly. A minimum of 4,400 words. That's about 300 words. So that's about like 10 pages, 11 pages. You're working a team. Usually you have a team of two all the way to six. That's usually how my teams end up. Sometimes my teams, as those of you are on here, may be a teams of six. And then during the course, people drop out. They have so much work or whatever. Or they got job uh, 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 requirements that change or job change or something changes. So now you're from a team from six to a team of two. All this was done, usually this business plan, this feasibility, when I was teaching the courses by one individual, they would give me 2,300 words, it's about like eight pages, and they did all these aspects. Most entrepreneurs start off with all these aspects. Most colleges, and going now going forward, because of uh, you need the expertise, you need other people involved, we start working in teams or what we call in this uh, a lot of schools or colleges collaborative learning in business we call it team uh, team working working in teams so saying all that so now you're working in a team so in a team i require 4400 words so that's about like three pages for uh, each or six very manageable at that level okay so you don't have to worry about uh, any of that now, if you're taking me online, and it depends if you're taking me for an eight-week course or a 16-week course online. If it's an eight-week course, a lot of times I don't do the teams, unless you're more one of my more advanced classes that I know if you've taken other online classes, because by the time you learn how to uh, function with an online, it takes a little while. There, your requirement for one individual will be like 2,000, uh, you know, about 3,000 uh, awards for an individual. Let me just do, drop this down my head a little bit higher. Okay. Remember, I'm live. Those who know, I'm recording this live. I discussed this in the classroom. This is just a supplement to what we discussed, okay? So you have to have a minimum words. I don't care how many pages you're looking at it. Usually the font's going to be a 12-point font, a, a, a double space. So that gives you like three words, uh, I mean 300 words per page, give or take, okay? All right, so now... You have to, okay, so now let me just open this up. It's about 300 words per page. Okay, now all seven headers. Here you have the seven headers. I'm looking at the seven headers. You have to have it. 
remember your title is going to be an a you're going to have uh, dr george machaki whatever course you have uh, uh and your name always and you know the college that I'm t uh, you're presenting this uh, uh, paper to and then you will have the seven headers you'll have the executive summary and i'll discuss all of them as uh, market analysis marketing and the websites so and just for your information but you will have a website underneath the uh, uh, advertising you have an advertising that's the fourth header you have your operation where you're going to open up your building how much of square foot what kind of equipment you need a critical risk and then you can have your recommendation statement executive summary recommend those are your seven headers not all it has to be identified seven header one two three four five six and seven and you will respond to uh, uh, information pertaining to your business underneath those headers that we're going to go through so far so good so all seven headers in there you need that if you want the point if you only give me five it reduces your uh, your uh, uh, what do you call it, it reduces your uh, 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 grading I'm sorry it's early in the morning excuse me okay so now we have all seven headers now vocabulary and concepts remember I, I am looking for at least five for each header I'm looking for a total of 35 vocabulary or concepts out of the book you've got my mind maps and i want you to bold them or underline them in a real business plan you won't use, utilize that you'll just put they'll be in there any language you're taking any you have to any course you're taking you have to use the concepts and uh, the, the the vocabulary from that course this gives you credibility so i'm talking to another business person i'm talking to another marketing person i'm talking uh, whatever they know i understand the topics at large or the discussion because i'm using the proper vocabulary good you have to put that in do it in my class or any class use the vocabulary or you won't get the full points okay so in bold now apa citations I'm requiring APA citations, uh, uh, six sources uh, uh, outside. It doesn't have uh, six or eight. Uh, we'll leave it as six. But a lot of these will have, uh, you know, maybe eight. Okay. It's not going to be, you're not going to find, if you open up uh, looking at George's hot dog stand, you're not going to find anything underneath George's hot dog stand at, 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 at an academic level. I'm not going to write about a hot dog stand unless it has a new trend, unless it has something to do with salamella or something that's going to help your health. But in business, I have to always find uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, other sources. I may be looking at my competitors. I may be looking at secondary sources, the U.S. Census. I may be looking at the Chamber of Commerce. And remember, in APA in business, I am looking within the most current, not something that happened in the 19th century. I want something happening current. The the more current, the better. I'm not taking something here and I'm opening up a business or a venture and saying, okay, in the future, I'm looking at it, to implementing it now, within the next six months. So I need the most current data to make sure I have the best decision possible. Okay, now, so it's going to be an APA file, a citation, six. Now, I'm going to show you in a second how to do APA citation. Real easy when you're doing your paper. So I'm going to open up this Word document. And let's we'll close this up, a data recovery. Let me close this. So here, close it. Okay, so, uh, 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 yes, okay. So now I have a Word document. Let me just throw this in. This is just basic. This is what we're really basically talking about. Up in here, let me see if I can make this just a little better. You have to use, remember, you're submitting this paper to me in Blackboard, and it has to be submitted as a Microsoft Word document. No other document. Not RTF file, nothing. It has to be a Microsoft Word document file, or I can't open up uh, the course management system I'm utilizing. is Blackboard course management system, and it only opens up Microsoft Word. You're a business class. You might as well learn Microsoft Office, uh, PowerPoint, Access, Excel. That's all business 90 percent if you have a mac user uh, uh or apple user for lack of better words you could utilize that you get software that's uh, set up for mac at both community colleges i teach you could get uh, microsoft office download or microsoft office 365 it's uh, in the cloud for lack of better words uh, or, or, or onedrive uh, and it'll uh, you'll be able to uh, uh, access everything else if you're using google.chrome or anything else make 
sure you know uh, 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 Google uh, document make sure you save it as a Microsoft Office document file boom and then upload it into uh, Blackboard okay so here we are let's see if I can make this screen just a little bit bigger uh, I guess not I'm stuck so if I'm looking at this is a Microsoft Office real quickly you're looking underneath here where it says uh, download word uh, uh, references okay let me open this up and if you see in here it says insert citation now here's the style before you go in there you're gonna look at APA style you're gonna you know what I mean so you're looking at APA that's the style we're using it's the most recent one and then you're going to go insert citation here pretend it's a document you got your name and all this stuff and now I, I want to insert a citation and I'm going to insert a citation. It's going to say a new source. And now it's going to ask you, is it from a book? Is it from a book selection, article, uh, interview, conference, uh, document, website, anything you want? So let's say it's going to be an interview. So once you press on this, it will tell you the items I need to put in there automatically. So here's the interview. I'm just going to make this real quick. Just see, see George, uh, title, boss. I'm, I'm making this up, all right? You know, you know, you're interviewing me. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm just gonna go uh, bosses uh, George again. You know, and year. Now here's what's important. How I know it's an APA format. To year is 2016. Uh, okay, uh, and a month. I'm not too worried about the month. Today is you know September for lack of uh, October. Uh, okay, you know, use write it properly. I'm doing this quickly because I don't want to spend too much time on this little thing and whatever date it is. Uh, uh, okay. And so now I have this and I go, okay, now look what happens. It came out from the source, George, and it gives me the year. This is what I'm looking for. When I'm looking in your paper, if you have something, and if I'm looking at the demographics, I took some information from the U.S. Census, and I'm looking at the demographics from 2010, and I'm opening up business now. I'm looking at the Humboldt Park area. I'm going to say Humboldt Park area, maybe in 2010, was predominantly Hispanic, whatever, but now in 2016, it's maybe, it's more mixture. Maybe it's more Polish. It's maybe more Ukrainian. Maybe it's more Middle Eastern. I don't know, but... I will know now in 2006, the, 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 the last time the census takes, I think it's every five years, if I'm mistaken, or seven, give me, uh, uh, right? We just, I think we just did it one, uh, a little while ago. When I have that data, that gives me enough data. I said, okay, the population, the U.S. government says, here's what my population. It gives me an idea. So I'm looking at this. Are we good? So, okay, let's go back to our thing. My APA citations this way. You don't have to do the whole paper APA right now. Remember, I'm just giving you a little bits of APA. Eventually, you'll be able to, uh, 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 when you're ready to uh, go for uh, in your bachelor's, it's all APA, American uh, 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 Psychological Association, for if you're in business or any of the uh, you know, psychology. If you're taking an English class, it's MLL. In business, it's all APA. And uh, you know similar citations, but the thing is the date. It's always showing me the current date. I need that current date. I need that information now. Okay, so we have that, so you have that. Now, grammar. I'm not repeating myself. Remember, I'm live. Okay, now the grammar, written at a college level, professional, no profanity. Uh, uh, you know, I'm looking for a grammar. You got spell check, you got grammar check. Utilize that. You know, I, uh, in the classroom, you, you're doing um, on a... Uh, in the forums or an email, sure, I can uh, accept a few errors because I do that myself. But in the paper, it should be perfect grammar. Read it, read it, and you're presenting this to your investors. You're presenting this to the government. You're presenting this to the bank, and you're saying, "I got high quality." If you got little errors in the grammar, it takes away from your message that my business is doing quality. If you can't write a quality paper, most likely you can't do a quality uh, product give or take some people aren't good at English English is second language for me but all right try to improve on your grammar okay it's turned into blackboard okay and I've got a whole uh, I got a little recording how you submit it most of you know it must be Microsoft Word doc one paper from one team and it has to be in this order you know when I'm looking at paper, I had only one semester. I get a paper turned in. This is one paper, you know, all the same fonts, no different fonts. It has to be, it, it's trained to, to your client or to me as an instructor. When you submit that paper, it has, it looks like one person wrote it, even though all individuals wrote it. Every section that you're responsible for, if George and Sally wrote this paper together, George and Sally in section, uh, uh, executive summary will be in there. Everyone's input in there, but somebody actually writes that and makes it come alive. And the same thing when I do the, 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 the marketing. Who did it? If it's one person, because remember, you're going to be graded 
as a team paper and then i'm also looking at the individual contribution to that team sometimes a team may not do as well as a team project but as an individual you exceed it because what i see you done in here i may up your point or give you a bonus for individual contribution even though the team gets one bonus understand real life now, a lot of times when you look what I'm asking here for, uh, there's a plan called, there's a software called Business Plan Pro. And that plan, uh, I think it's like $200 if you're starting off a business or anything else. It gives you the formats, asks you the questions I'm asking here, and you can type it in and it'll, it'll create the, uh, the, the business plan structure you still have to put all this information in it doesn't say i'm gonna open up a hot dog stand and it gives you everything about a hot dog stand. you know you're putting in it's just asking you questions just not like turbo tax or some of the other tax programs or h and r uh, uh, tax program you just add, ask your question you put in the number or you put your comments in and it, they uh, will basically just put it in that format for you okay now the last thing I want you to say is 25% I think I did in this class was uh, uh, 35% of your paper working in a team is through cat me comprehensive assessments of team members effectively that's a software program that you are i put your information in i created the team it sends out a peer evaluation the peer evaluation it's supposed to be uh, i look at a similar uh, simulates a 360 review in business that means everyone's reviewing me my peers my uh, my creditors my suppliers other departments and i get an overview this is what this program does it asks your peers in your cross functional team your team members how you did what did you do did you feel comfortable in the team did someone take over the team Does someone very rude in the team was someone a slacker or one that wasn't performing in the team and when i get that evaluation the program will give me a grade an average grade kind of you know i have to decipher it gives me a different uh, dimension and i say okay this person only did like a c work so if you got uh, let's say if this paper is worth 150 points and you only got uh, a very low you may only see for your presentations even though the team got the 150 point because you were not active you did very little of any you may only see 20 points or 30 points or 50 points you did some work but not enough to justify the full team's uh, effort make sure and this is uh, the, the biggest uh, problem with teams in the college level and businesses your boss reports everyone knows what's going on a little different you have the checks and balance you get rid of team members you can put team members in you can motivate them here the students feel i can't do nothing i got to do all the work i'm a high achiever so this program here tells everyone you know uh, that's why i have uh, members of at least uh, three or four in the team who's doing what it'll give you an average it won't say that george said this about you it says your team members and all overall said that you only did so much work and then i always put my two cents in there because remember i'm very active within the teams and i will be uh, up it or low it depends on what i see happening in the classroom what i hear from other students what i hear from you and what you present in this so remember it's 35 percent or 40 percent it could be a little higher or lower depends on the, on the course if it's a if it's more of my advanced classes uh, you know full marketing or full entrepreneur you're at a different level i expect more team collaborations you made the team uh, 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 what do you call it? feedback back to me and to you it should be maybe 50 or 60 percent in this case right now I'm just talking 35 if you're viewing this 35 or 40 okay all right so now we've got what's required and I did that at the beginning because some people get tired I'm not gonna do anything now I'm gonna go real quickly executive summary remember you're gonna have a header executive summary executive summary is the first thing you see and it's the last thing you do. Does that kind of make sense? From a reader, it's an abstract when you're looking at English. I read about the business. So it tells me, uh, it captures my interest right off the bat. So when you're doing my presentation, make sure you have your strong speaker to do the first one, my recommendation. Allows a quick overview, appears first but last, uh, prospective lenders, investors. It tells me a little bit about the company industry, my marketing needs, what's going to distinguish my business my product from my competitors now you have a mission statement a mission statement when we did this in class take that and place this in here is just a few sentences uh, uh, walmart's mission statement is to have the lower uh, 
the lowest price for the highest uh, for, for, for the for all of their products for customers could afford them target's mission statement give or take i'm just i'm paraphrasing is to have the lowest price but for higher quality goods or something whatever you know so you can see the mission statement if i got georgia's hot dog my mission statement to provide the best chicago hot dog there is i use pure vienna hot dog i use uh, 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 the, the, uh, the the buns you know what i mean uh, also uh, uh, the chicago type of buns the hostess buns that are here i'm just selling product i'm just saying this is chicago hot dog. i don't put any ketchup on there i give everything that's high quality that's my mission statement. Even though I sell other stuff, I sell beefs, I sell gear rolls, hot dogs are my, uh, my signature. This is what brings people into the hot dog. And you know, you get tired, so you try other stuff. Does it make sense? My mission statement, or high quality food, good customer service, simple so your employees understand. And this is what your whole business is based on this. This is your core mission. Okay, so uh, you got the philosophy, you know, and uh, we talked about that. Now you have to tell me about your product. Describe it. Any patents, legal, any logos, business name, you already done that in the class. Future development, always in the future. Investor wants to make sure I'm not, you know, if you get hired in a job, I don't want to be a stock boy all my life. I want to move up the ladder. Same thing. You start off small. I'm going to open up more businesses. I'm going to come into a franchise. I want to become an LLC. I want to become a corporation, okay? Uh, potential market. What's the market? You know, that's why you're looking at the sustainability. I got the money. Open up. Good idea. But will that market sustain? If not, here's another market we want to go to. Website. In this, I just want a website. If you take me for marketing class, you create a, a website. Here, I just want you to have a, 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 a PowerPoint. Show me a website. And then the website said, you know, you know, it's cut and paste. Most websites now, you just cut and paste. And uh, they got templates and you put in your picture. And it's all set up. All the programming is done behind you. But you get the services <coughs> with some of the domains. Okay? So you're just going to have a website. And I want you to give me a website number. So you may say www.gamhotdogs.com. Uh, uh, okay, that's fine. You don't have to create it. But I am going to look at that website. You have to look at the website to see if that website hasn't already been taken because your whole marketing plan can give that website if that website's been taken and it's a catchy name you may have to change your name a little bit so customers will look at that name and always oh game hot uh, george uh, game hot dog his website may be ww game something similar uh, or change make sure you have to look at that because if i find a website that's already there and it's not yours I, you know you're not i'm not asking you to open up a website i just want you to do the research okay and then the website and international global remember i can export import most of my colleges you're in you're already in a very diversified uh, classroom you have people from different cultures different countries connect with them they may go back to their host country and what you basically do now you got a contact person that's the hardest thing going international has someone that will you could trust and bring your product back in there and the small business association will help you to have a, a export you know not import they have for importing we import too much we need to export a little bit more okay you have to know a little bit of human relations and this one staffing we're going to find your employees you can say i'm going to get from high school i'm going to find from college whatever you know what i mean you have one job description when i'm looking at the one job description in here what i want you is your your oops sorry let me just put this in here your main main person i'll leave it at that i want to make it general so if i'm opening up a bakery who is my main vital employee I need? I need a baker. I need someone at the counter. If I don't have a baker, my business is gone. If I'm opening up a, a beauty salon, I need a beautician. At least one. I can have all the manager people, someone that does the hair. Then I'll have a specification. Remember we talked about job descriptions, what you want the person to do, specification, what are the requirements. This is where you have to be careful because this is where the government looks if you're doing discriminatory on your specification. Not in your job description. If you're telling me you got to clean the toilet, that's your job description. Take it a job, that's your job. But do I have to have a college level to clean the toilet? Some do, but uh, you don't have to, okay? Okay, recruitment, diversification, compensation program. There's two things compensation. First of all, why are you going to work for your business? So you're going to say you got benefits or whatever. The other thing is what kind of pay raises you, you think in a motivation. And we've talked that in class, and you came up with some, uh, in, include this in here. Now, financing need. <coughs> How much dollars to get the product or business going for it? And you can say, I need a 50000 you know, You're doing your best guess. Some students say, I'm going to open up a golf course. Yes, that'd be nice. Will you ever get the finance? Well, no, I'm thinking about it. Let's work 
right now. I want to open a golf course before I can open up a golf course. Maybe I'm an investor. Maybe I'm just selling golf clubs. So I can make some money. Give me a business. You could do it. Unless your father or your family or someone's going to give you $2 million, $20 million to buy the land. Even if that won't be enough, if you're looking where the property's at, forget it. Give me a business. You could do it. What this course is about, I don't care what business, from a golf course to a hot dog stand, you have to go through the same process. But I want it to be as realistic as you possibly can, figuring you may not get a job. This could be your you're going some a lot, uh, several or some people in my courses do actually open up businesses and this is their starting point okay and where do you expect to get the capital start up okay and part of the financing gives you uh, I, I asked for an income statement one income statement within the class you have to have that in you if not you're going to lose uh, on your point i you know in a business in a very little business plan it will be someplace else i'm just throwing this in here not to make it too cumbersome you know what I mean? But I want to cover all the chapters so I didn't make it as a separate uh, item. And I may do it down in the future. Okay, your SMART goal. Long-term SMART. Remember, you had to measure success. Uh, success uh, your su are you successful? Are you successfully? Jeez. Oh, it's one of those days. Good thing I catch this. Okay, are you successful? If I'm looking... Are you... Sorry. If I'm looking at... Um, what we did in class, I said, okay, you you have the money, you open up your business. I come to you in six months. How are you doing? Well, I'm doing great. How do you know you're doing great? Well, I've got 20% of the market share. I, I'm breaking even. Those are the smart goals that you need. Remember, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So this way you can say, well, I just got a good feeling it's going. How do you know? I don't know. Are you making money? I don't know. You, you remember? You have goals. You have to have some goals. You're not going to be, you know, it's nice to start the business and figure you're going to do well right off the bat. But that may not happen. Come on. Sometimes it takes a year, two, three years before you develop that clientele. But what's going to keep you going? And your goal may be, Shh, I made it for the first six months. I don't owe, you know, I'm breaking even. I'm not making a profit. But I'm not owing anyone. I'm paying off my debt, my loans, whatever. Okay. That's just my goal. Okay, so let's go into the market analysis. So now we, we'll close this off. Okay, so we finished the executive. Now we're going to go to market analysis, another header, and who's assigned. You're going to put the person's name on here. Who's your target customer? You got to let me know. Target market demographics. You get that, the niche. Uh, how we identify. Are you business to business or are you business to consumer? What's your market? My background is basically business to business, but I have to understand the consumer market because when I go to my clientele, I know more about their consumers or their their market than, than they do, and I'm a resource to them. Even though I'm not selling to them indirectly, I am. I'm basically selling to business to business. You may be selling strictly to consumer. That's fine. I just need to know. Okay, how do you plan to turn this idea into a business, service or product or a new department? Remember, it doesn't have to be a brand new business. I'm an existing hot dog place. Now the neighborhood changes, say it's more Korean. So I may have a hot dog that has a Korean flavor to it or some kind of side dish or uh, that will blend into uh that they will uh, say okay i've got my regular traditional dish and now the american dish and what we call infusion in the restaurant business okay so let me know about your customers your consumer what are their needs what do you expect to meet can you make a profit mostly yes and you know you know I'll, don't tell me lots of money i will make two percent of my investment or three percent of my return whatever lots of money if i'm broke uh, 10 bucks is lots of money Market research. Now, here's the hard part. You have to look at potential markets through secondary data, different markets. You're finding out who my customers are. And I'll put this in here through uh, second, secondary data. Okay. And that's how you go. Now, remember, when you're looking at this, you have to understand all of this for your plan. But some of you may just have the market analysis. Some of you are doing things. But as a business, you're all talking about this because it all builds on one. You're not in a, I'll do this and nobody else. Everyone in the team has to know what's going on because it's all, it, it, it connects everything together. That's why I try to do the concept match. You see the connection. Okay, so you find the data through, uh, through uh, U.S. Census or wherever data that's going to be, and you're going to put that as one of your uh, sources. Uh, into this where you found the data uh, Chamber of Commerce is a good one you maybe look at some of your competitors okay now why will they buy prices you know what's the reason 
prices, quality, location. And we, we talked about that. What's any negative impact? You know, is my price is too low. Now if I raise them up. You know, what's the market? What's the size of the market? Is it current? What are the trends? And I'm looking with the two or three years. Who are my competitors? Uh, what will bring customers in? What's your signature? If I look at McDonald's, what's your signature? Big Mac. Would you like Big Mac? And I, that's a signature. Hamburger. Well, Burger King. What's your signature? Uh, 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 the Whopper. Flame broiled. You see, the same still a hamburger. I should say meat. It's just that it's something different that brings me into there versus there. Okay? So now we have that. So if you're doing this section, remember I want your name in there. Who's taking care of that section? You're all evaluated as a team. So don't say mine is better than that. There's individual, but if so, you got to help the other one. You want the good team score, you know, because you're gonna have to and the good uh, what do you call it individual score. Okay, now marketing. Marketing is the heart. The heart. Remember, I told you it's the heart of your whole project and your marketing, integrated marketing campaign. What's your campaign now? Most of you, your first campaign is awareness. So you're going to develop a, a statement for your marketing objectives, uh, how they contribute to overall mission. You know, it's awareness. Hey, we've got the best hot dogs or we've got the best quality or whatever. Plan to reach your customers first. What is your target marketing buying process? Understand, businesses have a buying process. How do your consumers buy? A lot of consumers are going buying online now. That's why Amazon. Maybe I got to connect with Amazon. Maybe I got to connect with that. I forgot the other one, uh, Ababa. Uh, uh, it's a Chinese similar to Amazon only problem is you have a lot of uh, and you know they're, they're working on it you know I'm in the class you got to look at it what's one of their negatives well they have a lot of copy mates they're not original they look like a Samsung they look like an Apple but they're fake okay and, and you know they're trying to clear that up uh, it doesn't say uh, Amazon has that but Amazon a lot of times will try to get rid of that right away because they always go they're, they're always dealing with the vendor themselves they got a, a, a arrangement where the other companies uh ababa may not be dealing exactly with them okay so you have to know who your target markets are who you're going to sell to how will i contact them if you're telling don't tell me everyone you have to start off with something i want everyone to buy hot dog everyone doesn't need hot dog every generation doesn't need hot dog every, you, you, you know what i mean so but in every generation somebody does like hot dog how am I going to contact them? So I'm going to say I'm going to uh, I'm I'm looking for males. I'm looking for people from that aren't health conscious. I'm looking for people from uh, uh, maybe from 19 to 30 or whatever. Give me a market that saturate first because that's how I'm going to contact. That's how I know you understand your market, who you identify as your customers or your clientele. Okay, then you have to look at your competitors. Google it. I'm in here with my cat. How many other hot dogs? How many businesses are like by promotions? How are you going to generate there? A trade show, coupon. Where are you going to put the coupons in? All right. What's your product? Remember, what's going to make your product stand out? Is it just a, or maybe just it's a regular product, but the cost is less or it's convenient. Look at the razor blades. You see what i You got razor blades expensive. They say, hey, buy razor blades for 20 bucks. I'll give you five razor blades. Last year, all years because they're made in Germany. They special metal. They're a little different. They look like the regular other razor blade, but it's something else that's getting me in there and I'm thinking and I'm buying online. So how do they get in it? You know, pricing is important. We talked about pricing. Is your pricing acceptable in the market? Provide the profit, you know what I mean? It, uh, will increase the market share. What's your competitor's price? Remember, we talked about pricing. Remember, you have to look at this because your consumers or your target market are looking at this. Okay, place. Where are you going to open it up? Why would they come there? If I got a, a plumbing store, a plumbing shop, I don't have to be in a main thoroughfare. People aren't going to come to my say, well, let me see, uh, my toilet's stuck uh, uh, or uh, my drains are sticking. Let me see. I'm coming over here. Could you help me? They want you to come there and evaluate the situation. So you could be in an industrial site because you've got the trucks. You need a little more different. You don't need the front. So your rent and everything else is lower but because you don't need that exposure if i'm a hot dog saying i want to be right in the uh, corner i want to be in a mall i want to be by a big anchor store so people come in there that you know in, in, in an area or a strip mall or strip uh, 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 mall for lack of better or, or uh, outdoors is as long as there's another hot dog stand. it could be a chinese place it could be other things but not a hot dog another hot dog stand is it takes away from me okay it's my comp uh, competition. I'm going for the same group of people coming in that uh, strip mall, that the shopping center, uh, and there's only so many that are going to come in there. And there's two of us. One of us is going to leave. Okay, what's your campaign? Uh, market to share. You know how you know it's successful. Public relations, more word of mouth. You know it's nice to have the merit when you open up. And public relations, you can't control. You can't control the message, but you can control how the message is presented. 
So you have your input, and we discussed that. You take the course, you'll learn a lot about it. Okay, uh, international, exporting, importing, who's your distri dis uh, distribution, how you can distri distribute, is going to come in. Every business has to have uh, some kind of website. People find out about your business. You can order on business. You can you maybe start selling some stuff online. Hey, it's not a market. They don't come in here because of weather or whatever. I can still sell to other markets that don't have my business. That's how you expand your business. That's how you expand your market. And then the SWAT. Remember we talked about the SWAT, strength, weakness, and opportunities. Strengths about your product and your competitors. Make sure your strength and look, if I'm selling a hot dog stand, some students will go, one of my strengths, I like got a strong management team. And that. that's not what's going to bring people in. You could say I have a gourmet hot dog maker that graduated from the high end uh, culinary school. I don't. It's just something to bring them in. They don't care about your management. They care about the food. That's why I'm going to a hot dog stand. I, you know, the management is that you keep the place clean, keep the prices down, and you're still in business. The hot dogs what I'm coming in for. Okay. So remember, your strength is how I'm going to take this straight. And I'm going to put it in a marketing campaign when I do my work. Uh, oh, uh, uh, George is opening up. We have high quality hot dogs by a culinary chef from France or wherever. I'm just making that up. And our prices are reasonably priced. What did I do? My mission, high quality, reasonable goods. Everything else is my marketing. Oh, we're open up. Come give us a try. You get uh, one, buy one hot dog, get fries free or get a pop or something to bring you in. Remember. My job is to marketing is to bring you in. Remember, that's my campaign. So that's my message I bring them in. Now, when you go to advertising, and this website, before I go in here, the website, other websites you can look up. It's not your website. Your export government, uh, Department of Economics, uh, State of Illinois, uh, business. Uh, use these sites to get more information. Okay? That's all this is. It. I should do it this way. We're live. Okay? So now, now you've got your marketing message. That's the heart. Now you're going to be going into our advertising. If I look at my advertising, 41 minutes, I'm just checking here, okay? If I look at my advertising, excuse me, if I look at my advertising, now advertising is the mouthpiece or the communication of my marketing campaign. It has my promotion, everything else in there. So you have to tell me and meet a selection. You're up here, remember, you're looking at it as this plan. I don't want this big, out there and very uh, high level. A marketing plan or business plan is bringing it down to the detail. As I mentioned in class, I want a house, I want a big house. Okay, so they kind of, so they, uh, you have an artist render what kind of house, you got the walkway, all that. Okay, there's your house, very nice house. That's your conceptual idea, your mission statement. Now, how do I make it happen? You go to an architect, and this is what the architect, he gives you more detail. So I'm looking at media selection, depending on your customers, is a billboard, you're gonna direct mail, you could have all of them or just one or two, but you have to tell me the zip code, not say I'm gonna just do direct mail, what zip code, billboards, outside, buses, where, give me the location, newspaper, local, journal, local, Daily Herald, uh, uh, National, uh, maybe Wall Street Journal, depending, now if you're gonna say local newspaper, Wall Street, uh, uh, you know, Daily Herald, and you're going in your generation millennials, you know, or generation, the younger generations, you know, to about like, 25, 35, they're not reading a paper. Trust me, everything's on their smartphone, just like I am. Everything's on my smartphone, you know, baby boomer. Everything's on my smartphone. I still read the paper. I'm old fashioned, but I get the information. But I still like that smartphone. I just Google it. If it comes in the news, oh, it just catches my attention. So this is not, this will not work for the target market you identified. So I already know you got a business plan flaw. Okay, that's how I know. Do you understand the market? Yes, yeah, it's still a risk. There's always a risk in business. You're trying to minimize the risk by coming up with some detail. You're thinking it through before you just open up someplace. Okay, now same thing. A radio station. What radio station? I'm selling country and western gear. I want the radio station. You know, I think it's W ninety nine point five uh, or whatever. Just tell me why. Because majority of my uh, the consumers are there. try to give me a little pricing, look up uh, what the pricings are, and you could go to that radio station and they'll tell you who their market, who there's, uh, who they know who their market the people are listening to. 
Okay, that's what you want to advertise in TV, is a cable, TV, and everything else. Okay, so that's the media, public relations. We talked about that. Your ads, you know, messages. You know, what's your messages? It's a print uh, layout of coupons. You know, uh, you're gonna have coupon. You, you can just give me a general idea. Just do a, a picture of a coupon. We say we get five off at this level. If you take it before more advanced, I expect more. If you open up a business, you better have this down. You know, your SWAT. We already talked about again SWAT again. Straighten your weaknesses, and that's gonna come back from your marketing, your advertising plan. And how often are you going to expose to them? Response rate. How many people you want to come back? It measures effectiveness and efficiency. I have an ad out there and it says, if you see this ad, tell me you saw ad 29 and I'll give you 50% off. People come into your store and you say, how did you come in? Well, I saw your ad. Okay, well, I don't know. I just saw your, just drove by. Nobody comes in for the ad. There's no reason to spend money for that ad. No one saw it. No one came in. That didn't motivate them. Why spend that money? Run the contract out, find something, or move that ad, change it, or move it to a different market or different media. That's what I'm looking for. And how often do you run the ad? How quickly? When are you going to run it? You know, do you run it simultaneously? Do you run it right here? Or do you run it, you know, give it a little here, prepare it? You don't want to run an ad down, you don't open it up for six months, waste of money. They're going to come out of here and they're going to forget about it. E commerce, your promotional mix, you know, uh, we'll, we'll talk about, we already talked about that, and international exporting, okay? So that takes care of advertising, if you have that. The next one is operation. You have to tell me a location. Where are you located? You know, look out. Look for the uh, rented site. I'm going to open up at, uh, you know, in Palatine. I'm going to open up at Grays Lake. I'm going to open up at Wheelie. I'm going to open up at Barrington, Lake Forest. I don't really care. Where? Fine. Here's the thing. Here's the industrial site. <coughs> Remember, you've got the money. I'm going to say, hey, six months after this, I, I like it. Go run with it. You're not going to start looking for it now. You already say, we already have a location found. You're talking to investors. They don't want to say, I think I'm going to open up here. I want to know here. This is all, once you know you're opening it up, then it helps you to find your research. You find everything you want in that location. And then if you're expanding to another market, you go through the same process just for that uh, market, okay? Physical space. You can say I need to score footage of this. How big? You know, most of the tiles are 12 inches. So measure, look at the store. Do I need a big store? Do I need a smaller store? Am I going to rent? Am I going to buy? <coughs> Excuse me. Where is it going to be? Are you going to lease, build equipment? You know, uh, production services. Just give me real general, all right? What's my fixed cost? What's my variable cost? And you're going to have that already information when we do the income statement, which we already did in a class. Remember, income statement, look at my... And sometimes when you do an income statement, you look at your expenses and your, your revenues coming in and other streams of income. You know, a lot of businesses, you may not be making money for the first two or three years. You're losing money. So what are you going to do? Well, that doesn't make sense. How am I going to support and sustain myself? Good question. So you're taking out your loan or you got a line of credit. Take out more. Don't spend it. Put it away. Make some investments in it. But when you need the money, you draw out of that account. Your uh, your, your uh, uh, retained earnings account, for lack of better words, if you're looking for accounting. I'm trying to throw in some of the business concepts. Remember, you got to start using business terms. My fixed costs are, my variable costs are, my labor is, my job description is, you know, labor force. You're going to be trained there, you're going to get them. Are you going to get some discounts from the government? Planning for outsourcing, or you made outsource? Or you could be a virtual office. I'm a contractor. You know, I got different accountants. I'm not, you know, let's say if I'm a, a, a building contractor. So uh, what I will basically look at as a building contractor, I don't have to have anyone. If you're uh, building a house in Barrington, high end, I got high end contractors that uh, I could say, hey, I got a job for you. You work for me underneath my umbrella and uh, uh, give me a bid for this. You know, like flipping the house. Or if I'm doing someplace in maybe in a, like a Grays Lake or Palatine, you know, average uh, suburb, I might just want a middle and end contractor, middle and end con uh, uh, architect. So I could pull those. They don't work for me. They work for me indirectly because I'm hiring their service. I'm outsourcing to them. But to you, I'm the one, the main point. You got any problems with the contract, you deal with me because their contract was me and I, my contract is with you. Like other business. Okay, so we have that. Uh, you know, uh, plans for outsourcing, distribution. Uh, when will you start using technology? You will start using technology in my operation right now. My point of uh, uh, purchase, uh, POP, is basically electronic uh, cal uh, 
the register. It's already tied into my computers, tied into QuickBook or some kind of a software. I know my inventory, everything else. You have to use it. There's no way you can do it by hand. You could, but you need it. You know, you got QuickBooks for billing and everything else. You want to look professional, even a small business. You know, UPS got their nice ad. You know, why ain't they coming? You know what I mean? You had to look professional. You, you know, UPS got the uh, uh, business card, visitor card, whatever. Make your business look professional if you have a website to your consumer. They may not know that you're only a little working out of the garage or working in my office, but they, from then they think it's your big business. So that's the operation. Where, when, and how much it's going to cost me. Okay, now critical problems. Launching your business, you're gonna have a risk. Remember, every business, most businesses fail. Uh, Fifty percent fail within the first three years. You know, if you made it past the three-year mark, and the fifty-year uh, probability are higher to be successful, depending uh, on the external forces, everything else out there. You know, you may be in an area and everybody got laid off or depression, everything else. No one's buying your product. You're not buying anybody's product, so you're in the same boat they are. But, you know, that's the, the worst case scenario. Identifying any kind of assumptions. I'm a hookah bar. Then, you know, the smoke. And all of a sudden, I'm in the town and they people don't like it or whatever. And so they say, hey, we're going to make the new regulations. No more smoke bars in here. What's my alternative? Do I go to the next suburb or do I change something that is, you know, do I become a cigarette company then or, an, or, or a distributor or something else? I'm still a hookah bar, but I'm not here. I'm just a distributor now. No problem with that. I'm a business. I'm not selling. I'm not opening up here, but I have other location. That's your critical risk. What do you do when that happens? You know, the economy, global influence, and new regulations. Now, the last thing you do is your recommendation statement. What do you recommend? You may say after all this, hey, you know, if you're doing it for your own, I my recommendation is yes, this is a good venture because I can turn profit, return on my investments. I know my customers want it. There's a need in the market. Sell it. Remember, it's the last thing I hear. I hear all this stuff here, in here, but then the last thing I see here is your recommendation statement. Not so, yeah, I think you should open it up. Sell it. Same thing when you're going for an interview. The last thing to say, any questions for me. That's the last thing I hear. No, everything's okay. Well, uh, if I would get the job, where would you think I would work? Here. <coughs> Your recommendation <coughs> statement. Yes, this is the best deal. I want you to work here. I think this is the best plan. Or your recommendation may be, no. Right now, the time is not right, or the location is not right. We should go here. Don't say, I don't think it's a good idea. You have to give me a uh, uh, why. Just as intense as you do in your opening statement to get me in, you want to leave me with a positive, quick summarization of your whole plan. That's what I'm looking for. And if it's a recommendation that's not effective now because of the constraints or the money or whatever it is that I found out here, your investor or your company or your senior management, if you're working within an organization looking for another market, say, you know what? You got 70% here is good. I will help you develop, give you extra cash, bring in some more resources. Let's look at this. Maybe help you find a location that this could be profitable. Because if you're profitable, I may get my money back. You're profitable. It's a good investment for me. You expand. You pay me back. You're going to come back for more, not only for my investment. You're also going to come back for my expertise and my help. Value added. Other things you add to buying your product, coming into my store. This is business to business. This is what you call relationship management. Okay? So we have the recommendation stage, a minimum, a paragraph or more. Don't, don't give me yup or yes. All right? That's it. This is your whole paper. And remember, make sure you look at this. Last thing I end here, again, remember, I am looking for... 300, about 4,400 words per team. Just about three pages each. Very manageable. Uh, all seven headers identified. Looking for at least five concepts for every section. Don't put it all on one. I'm looking at a total. I'm looking at a total of 35 or more. This could be more than the 4,400 words. If you actually open a business and you submit to me a paper that has, uh, you know, let's say maybe a, a 10,000 words or, or higher, you know, maybe like 30, 40 pages because it's a full business plan. I will look at it and just say, yes, you met my requirement. Otherwise, that's my consulting fees when you're looking at it. That's a whole different process. For this class, is just to see how you take 
all the chapters that you're reading and how do I implement them and instead of just knowing conceptually I apply them into a business so I know marketing remember like I tell you if you take a marketing class and you got a marketing degree and I hire you and you don't know how to do a, a marketing plan or integrated you don't know the four P's of mark you know the four P's but you don't know how to make them happen I just Google it I save myself 45000 Why do I need you? You know, you're just a definition. You're just a, uh, you, you, unless you can apply it. I am a practitioner. Business people who have PhDs or their degrees and masters in business, we're practitioners. We take some concept now that somebody else came up and we make it happen. Okay, so you got your vocabulary, bold, underline, APA citation, show you how to do that. Grammar at a business professional level, not hey you. I don't want to hear your name. Once you, the only time I see your name is George and Sally or Gladys, we open up the business. After that, if it's GAM hot dog, GAM consulting, GAM whatever, whatever your business, that's all I want to see. You no longer are there. I want to remember your business venture, not you. When you say, hey, I'm George with Gam Consulting. I'm George with Gam Hot Dog. I'm George with Gam Bowling Alley. Put that business first. This is what you're selling. Not you, your business, your team. Okay? Microsoft Word document, only way I accept it. I don't care what you got pages, doc. It has to be saved as a Word document, DLC or DLC X, because I can't read it. I can't open it. I can't add my comments to it, and you won't get your grade, okay? And remember to cat me, make sure you do your peer evaluation. If you don't do it, you get a zero no matter what. So you're already low, your, your grade's already down by 35%, no matter what the team does. And this is just to have uh, people in the team have a voice to make sure, you know, I'm, I, to make sure everyone in the team works together. Not that you want to be individual. We all like to work individually. Even if you're a small business, you got to bring in the score, people from outside that know the business, other people to help you grow your business. That's team building in an academic called collaborative learning. It's a skill set, a social, emotional skill set uh, 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 that you will be able to have that when you go into the workplace, you know how to talk to people, how to voice your opinion or your uh, disappointment in something and how to ask questions, how to write it up, how to negotiate, how to work in a collective environment. Okay? All right, so that's it. My name is Dr. Jordan Bachaki. This is a quick overview on the feasibility research business plan. Remember I said feasibility research. You know, the full business plan, you're going to be doing a lot of work. This is just before I open up a business, before I do anything else. Does it make sense in where I want to do it? Once I know it, then I start adding all my product line employees. I just expand. But I already have the template. I have the base. I start off small, and as the business grows, I start expanding, and I start bringing in other uh, 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 programs in. So I'll see you, and I can't wait to read your uh, papers. I'll talk to you later. Bye.